Google Search Console is a free tool created by Google to help website owners like us better understand the dynamic between our website and Google and like Google search. So simply by just setting up and creating a free Google Search Console account, you're able to see what keywords you're already ranking for in Google, which pages are showing up for those keywords. You're able to see if there's any errors that Google is finding when it's crawling your website and so much more. So that's what we're gonna dive into in today's video. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com. And on this channel, I help simplify things like SEO, websites, tech, and I dive into tools and recommendations to help you grow your online business in a way that works for you. So in today's video, we are going to be diving into Google Search Console. And like, I'm laughing because I'm going to try to keep this video as beginner friendly as possible. And I'm going to try to not dive into every single nitty gritty thing because otherwise we would be here for 45 hours and like ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, so I am going to try to keep this as a beginner friendly dashboard overview. Okay, the other thing that I wanna note if you don't already have Google Search Console set up for your website, pause this video, click the video links in the description box below and set up Google Search Console already. Okay, so I want you to have Google Search Console already set up and I want you to already submit your sitemap to Google. And if you're like, what are you talking about, lady? Don't fret. Like I said, I do have the links to two different tutorials that are going to walk you through those two things. And the reason we want to do that first and then come back to this video is because we want to see if we can set those things up and maybe start gathering a little bit of data so you actually kind of understand what I'm looking at with your own Google Search Console account as we're diving in. But if you're rip roaring, you're ready to go, you're excited about Google Search Console. Then let's just head into the screen share. Okay, so first things first, how do we even log into our Google Search Console account? Well, you can go to search.google.com slash search dash console, which is a total mouthful, or I'm going to leave the link to it in the video description box below. Or if you don't wanna do that, then just head over to Google and type in Google Search Console. And it looks like any of these three options should take you right over to your account. So when you log in, you're going to see something that looks like this. And now obviously technology changes, Google likes to change things sometimes. So if it doesn't look exactly like this, there may have been some updates since I recorded that. So just keep that in mind. The other thing is that you might see different things on the left-hand side here. This will depend on like what type of website you have. So if you're selling things online, if you have an e-commerce shop, you might have more things under like shopping or products or something like that. Okay, so just keep that in mind that this will be different depending on what you got going on on your website. But I'm going to dive into the basics so that you feel a little bit more comfortable diving in and kind of exploring Google Search Console on your own. If you're logging into this account and you only have a couple minutes to kind of take a look at data and stuff, a really cool place to start is right up here you can see your search console insights so click on that and a new tab is going to load this is basically like a snapshot of your google search console data so you can see a whole bunch of stuff happening this is actually a new or not a new website it's definitely not it's an old website haven't added a blog post in a really long time but if you're adding content you should see some stuff popping in here you're going to see your most popular content you can see how many eyeballs have seen it, how long they're spending on the page, and then you can click over and kind of just get, like I said, a snapshot of what's happening. And we love seeing these little green things like something's trending, high engagement time. We love things like that. All of that is really good for your search rankings. And then if you keep scrolling, you'll be able to see additional information. So like what keywords your website's showing up for and all of that fun stuff. So you can use this option, like I said, if you only have a couple 
couple minutes to dive into your data. But the main thing is you're going to see kind of like little snippets of separate reports happening right here in your main dashboard. But where we or where my clients and I typically like to hang out is in performance. So if we click on performance, your screen's going to look something like this. And by default, we're going to be looking at web performance. So Google search like on the web, you can go ahead and mess around with that. You can take a look at the different options here. You can, can compare different options. I'm not going to do that, but it's definitely an option for you. And then take note of right here, it says date. So we can choose like the time frame that we want to be able to look at this data around. Okay, so you can see these options here. You can choose a custom time frame, like a custom date. Or if you want to compare things, like maybe you got a website redesign, or maybe you want to see how you're doing from this February to last February, or the previous 28 days to the last 28 days and stuff like that. So you guys can go ahead and mess around with these date ranges, compare things and kind of see how things are moving and trucking along that way. But for simplicity purposes, I'm just going to keep it like this. So then you'll see right here, we have total clicks. So total clicks, how many people clicked over from Google search web results in the past three months over to my website. And then we have total impressions. So total impressions is like how many eyeballs saw your website in Google search results. So they might have seen it, but like scrolled by it and stuff like that. So take that into account. That's why this number is usually way bigger than clicks because more people are seeing it than more people are clicking on it. And then you can see that these colors match with the colors of the graph here. So this is just like a visual representation of these numbers and kind of how you can see this information over a period of time. So the other thing that we have here that isn't turned on by default, but it's your average click through rate. So so if we do a little bit of math with these two numbers, we're going to get the average click through rate for your website in the given time frame. So how many people are clicking through from Google search results over to your website? OK, so then you'll notice that when I click on that, another little line with the corresponding color shows up in this line graph here. Same thing with average position. OK, so when you click on those things, they not only show up in the graph here, but when you scroll down, they start to show the data in the table down here, too. So if we don't click on those and we scroll down, you're only going to see clicks and impressions. So this was a thing that was really confusing for me when I first logged in. I was like, wait a minute, how do I actually see this data and all of that? So Hopefully that's really helpful because it's not something that's intuitive when you first log in. So if we continue to scroll down here, I'm actually just going to leave these checked. So if we continue to scroll down here, you're going to see queries. Queries is essentially keywords. It's the keywords that your website is showing up for in organic search results. OK, so queries, a.k.a. keywords. So these are all of the queries and then we can see the corresponding numbers to each of these queries. So this is the position. Typically, there's around 10 organic search results per page. So if you're seeing a number less than 10, you can assume that you're on page one on average. I say on average because depending on people's locations or depending on certain things, you might show up in different positions for different people depending on their search history and things like that. So Google Search Console is showing you an average, which is why you see like, a point here instead of just a number five, because if we go to Google search results, there isn't a position 5.2. But I just wanted to explain like where the heck these decimal numbers come from. So it's an average overall. OK, so we want to scroll down here and we see the top 10 results here, but you can go ahead and you can add more if you'd like to. So we can see the top 100. And then you can also, if you're being found for a lot of keywords, you can start scrolling over and really get a really big picture of like every keyword that Google is associating with your website. But notice once we start getting into these other pages, it's like we ain't getting no clicks. There's very low impressions. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So I'm going to try to keep this a little bit more simplistic when we're looking about it here. 
And then you can also click on these things and just have the data be organized by the top impressions, by the top clicks, by the top CTR. So you can see how this data is kind of changing depending on what I'm choosing to prioritize right here. So that's usually really helpful. And then the other thing is that we can come over here to pages and look at this data on a page by page basis. So we can see the different URLs on this website and the top performing ones are blog posts. And so we can see on average, this blog post is showing up on page two because like I said, there's usually around 10 organic search results per page. So 14.1 would mean it was on page two. So we can click on the page itself and then we can go over to queries and we can see what keywords are driving traffic to that page. And we can see those specific positions here. Okay, so we can get pretty, we can get pretty, pretty detailed in this information, y'all. Okay, so we can see the keywords associated with specific pages. And so if I don't want to do that, I'm going to click out of there and we can do the opposite too. So you can also click on a keyword and then head over to pages and see the pages that are associated with that specific keyword or query. Okay, so that's a fun way to kind of take a look at this data too. And then if we keep hanging out here, we can also see our data depending on countries, depending on devices, depending on search appearance, if you have anything there, or depending on certain specific dates to see if one date you had better search results than another one. So all of this information is really fun to kind of play around with and just like I said in the intro like get to know the dynamic between your website and how Google sees it. So the other thing that I want to point out here is that you can click filter rows and then you can filter the data that you're seeing depending on what you want to see. So if we go ahead and click on position we can choose to show numbers or pages or queries that are greater than 10 and then click done. Now I can see either keywords or pages that are not on page one, that aren't associated with page one, because I'm only seeing positions that are greater than 10, that are greater than what typically shows on page one for organic search results. Okay, so we can come over here to pages and we can see like this page, like I said, hanging out on page two. So this would be a really good place to hang out and be like, okay, if this page is showing up on page two, for let's just say this specific query because you'll see that it's position 60 and I really want to prioritize this keyword like this is the keyword that I want to show up on page one for then that would be a really good place to start re-optimizing that specific page for that specific keyword so hopefully <laughs> that wasn't too wordy for you hopefully that made a little bit of sense but this is kind of how you can start using google search console to improve your organic search rankings because you're getting familiar with your data you're getting familiar with which words google is associating with which pages on your website and do you like those keywords do you not like those keywords would you rather prioritize another keyword well if that's the case then maybe we have to go in and re-optimize it okay so i just wanted to dive into that Hopefully that wasn't confusing, but let's head into the left-hand menu and I'll start to explain these things. So the first one that pops up on my screen, and like I said, it might be different on your screen, but the first one that I have here is URL inspection. So this is basically, you can pop in a U, like any URL from your website and you'll be able to see some information about it. So you'll be able to see, is the URL even on Google? When was the last time that it was crawled? And so this is really helpful when you're kind of like, hey, I don't know if this page is on Google. I don't know if Google has the most updated version of this page because maybe you've updated it. So if you have updated this page, you can, right here it says page changed, you can click request indexing and that can kind of tap Google on the shoulder and be like, hey, 
heads up this URL that's been updated, it's been changed, please recrawl it. And so that can maybe improve your search rankings if you've went in. And like I said previously, like maybe you've re-optimized a page, maybe you've updated it, maybe you've added things and stuff like that. So the URL inspection tool is really, really cool to be able to see specifically what's happening on specific pages versus like your overall website. And then the next section that we have here is indexing. So when we click on that, we'll be able to see how many pages on the website are indexed. So if a page is indexed, that means that it's able to show, like Google knows about it and it's in Google's big filing cabinet. If a page isn't in Google's big filing cabinet, then it's not going to show up in search results. So usually when people see this, they start to freak out and they're just like, well, not all of the pages on my website are indexed. Not every page on your website will be indexed. Not every page on your website is meant to show up in search engines. So seeing a difference in these numbers is totally normal. We just want to make sure that our priority pages, like our blog posts that we created to target a certain SEO keyword on, or our homepage, like we want to make sure that the pages that make sense for our keywords, we want to make sure that those are indexed. But looking at the rest of this data, just no, like the question of do I have to do anything about this? It all depends on context. That's why I said I'm trying to keep this like beginner friendly because there's so many nitty gritty nuances about things. But basically, if we want to see information of why pages aren't indexed, you can hang out and kind of check these things out. So some things have been crawled, but they're not indexed. So Google crawled them and they were like, hey, this isn't really important to us. We're not going to index it on Google. So you can click on it and you can scroll down and you can see here that like it's different versions of my pages. Like these pages, for example, I don't need them indexed on Google. I don't want them showing up in search results. I would rather my blog post URLs, my homepage, a services page, a product page, a collection page, not these weird versions of pages. Do you know what I mean? So like if you're seeing this stuff, it's we have to use like context and critical thinking to be able to understand if there's anything that we have to do with them. Okay, so you can go through and you can see like these pages were discovered, but they're not indexed. So Google knows that they're a thing, but they're not actually in Google's filing cabinet. I'm looking at these, yeah, I don't want my checkout page. I don't want an account page. I don't want the shop page, but this newsletter page, maybe this is a page that I do want showing up on Google, but now I'm looking at it and absolutely not, like unless I updated this, this ain't the best solution to no problem. So I'm going to ignore that. But if you do see a page that's in here and you're like, wait a minute, I think that this page is a really good solution to the problem, then you can do kind of what I already said and come in here to the URL inspection, pop the URL in here, click enter on your keyboard and then request indexing. Like that button that we already saw right here. Okay, so that's what you would do if you see some things that are either crawled or discovered or you think these errors are not correct, you can go ahead and use that URL inspection tool to see if Google can recrawl it and hopefully index it if you think that Google made a mistake or if they skipped over something. Okay, so there's other things in here excluded by no index tag. This is usually like a privacy policy page or different versions of pages. And so, yeah, I actually don't want these pages to be indexed. Okay, so that is like a super quick overview of like the page indexing errors that can show up on your website. But I just wanted to dive in and give some examples of like things that you might not have to worry about. But there might be things in here that you do have to worry about. So clicking on these and kind of seeing what Google is showing you and kind of being able to problem solve and then decide, does that make sense? Can I ignore it? Or is it something that I have to prioritize and fix? So diving into this stuff, it's especially helpful if maybe you have a website developer or you're working with an SEO strategist or consultants, so you can kind of ping things back and forth with them. But some things you can ignore, it's just good to know like an over all view of like what's happening with your pages. Okay, so then you can learn more about your pages that are indexed to make sure that these align with your priority pages. And then you can also see when each one was last crawled, which is helpful. 
And then right here we have sitemaps. Hopefully you've already paused this video and submitted your sitemap to Google Search Console. If you haven't, pause this video, click the video in the description box below and follow that tutorial. I walk you through how to submit your sitemap, what is a sitemap, all of that fun stuff. But this is where your sitemap lives. Removals is if you have content that's showing up on in Google search that you don't want showing up on Google search, you can play around with the removals. So I have a video that kind of walks through that. I will also link that in the video description box below. And then we have experience. So this is user experience. Google judges on website on over 200 factors. A lot of them are user experience metrics. So they just started adding this, I think within the past like year or two. So we can see at page experience. So you can read more about that here, but basically you can take a really quick overview. So this website, we have good under HTTPS, meaning that this website has an SSL certificate. It's secure. That is a major Google ranking factor. If you don't have this or you're not passing this, this is going to be like one of the top priority things that you need to take care of. Okay. And then the other thing that we have here is core web vitals. So it's one of the newer ranking factors that Google came out with that kind of takes into account page loading speed and all of that stuff. So you can dive into that. You can click around. You can see if there's any URLs that are poor or need improvement and all of that stuff there. And then we have some enhancements. You usually don't have to mess around with this stuff. Um, I see like these right here are valid. There's no critical issues. Okay. So that's the important thing is to, is to see no critical issues. And then here we have security and manual actions. So if Google basically is like blacklisting your website or they're seeing an issue on your website, they're going to put the manual, they're going to put that in the manual actions there. So as long as when you log in, that's like, not showing anything or when you click on it, we see no issues detected. That's what we want. Same thing with security issues. So these could be major things happening or if you're seeing issues listing here, they're going to be a priority for you to fix. And then legacy tools and reports, we don't have to dive into that. This is a newer thing that they started adding here in Google Search Console. So it's external links, internal links, top linking sites back to your website, all of that fun stuff. So you can dive into that, play around with that. And then I believe last but not least, we have settings. So this is where you'll be able to add a user and give somebody permission if they want to take a look at your Google Search Console information, if you're working with an SEO person, if you're working with a website designer, anything like that. If you change your URL, your domain name, you can go ahead and let Google Search Console know about that. And if you want to associate your website, your Google Search Console account with other things like Google Analytics. Um, and then I think that there's other things that you can go ahead and add in here too, but I'm not going to dive into that. But essentially, that is a really quick overview. If you do have questions and like you're wondering about users and permissions, I do. <laughs> Surprise, surprise, have another video that dives into that stuff. But that is hopefully a really beginner friendly overview of the Google Search Console dashboard. Hopefully that kind of breaks everything down, makes it a little bit more practical, more actionable. I tried to be as quick as possible, but thank you for sticking with me. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about anything or if you want to see more videos that I don't already have about Google Search Console. So that's it for today's tutorial. If you guys found this video helpful, give me a really quick thumbs up. Truly, the simple thumbs up does go a long way in letting the YouTube algorithm know that my video was helpful and therefore pushing it out to new people that it also might be helpful for. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on bell notifications, and I will see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of this video and you're just getting started with DIY SEO, but you want some help navigating the process, then definitely consider downloading my free roadmap to successful SEO. The free SEO guide dives into what SEO is, why it's important, and how search engines work, along with my six-step process to improving your SEO and your rankings. And then finally, I dive into the three tasks that you can start doing today to get the results that you want from Google. If you want to go ahead and snag this for yourself, then you can click the link in the video description box below 
or you can head over to my website at mariahmagazine.com roadmap to download your own copy. Thank you.